Okay. So um, this is a patient who came in for, um, they have cirrhosis, they had a lesion. You can see they have, um, uh, they're doing screening for this. And at the edge of the screen, uh, we could, we detected a mass in the breast and it was pretty avidly enhancing. You can see it here. Um, on T2, it was intermediate signal. So I asked my breast friend, you know, what would be her differential? And she said, you know, could be a fibroadenoma. Breast cancer is usually more infiltrative. Could be a phyloides tumor, a lymph node, but definitely needs a biopsy. So this was biopsied and it came back solitary fibrous tumor. Um, one thing you'll also note is that the patient has the cirrhosis, but their pancreas was normal and their kidney is normal. So um, they end up getting their liver transplant and they come back and um, they, they were feeling a mass in their neck. And so they got a neck CT and they had developed this avidly enhancing mass in their neck. And this was biopsied and it came back solitary fibrous tumor. And then they um, were get undergoing um, surveillance of their abdomen for their transplant. You can now see they've got a new liver here. They've got a transplant. And uh, they had this big pancreatic mass that was growing over time. And this was biopsied and also came back solitary fibrous tumor. And um, this is a renal mass that was ablated. And this came back also solitary fibrous tumor. So a um, couple of things that I wanted to talk about. Um, one was about, um, so in this case, this was solitary fibrous tumor of the breast um, that ended up post-transplant leading to metastases in the neck, pancreas, and the kidney. So I wanted to cover two uh, brief topics. One is about um, transplant-related malignancies, and the other is about solitary fibrous tumor. Um, so this is a great paper from Radiographics um, called Malignancy After Solid Organ Transplantation, a Comprehensive Imaging Review. And basically, there is a higher rate of malignancy after solid organ transplantation. Normally, your immune system um, helps you fight off some cancers, and the immunosuppressive therapy can uh, cause deranged immunosurveillance, so it lets cancer cells um, get through uh, without attacking them. It can actually have direct carcinogenic effects, so certain um, immunosuppressive therapies, and it can lead to an increased incidence of viral infections like EBV um, and other things that can also cause malignancy. Um, this was the largest study of about 175,000 transplants, um, and 60% were kidney, 22% were liver, and basically they showed that the malignancy rate was about two to three times the general population. And now that they're aggressively being treated for infections and cardiovascular disease, um, malignancy is actually the highest cause of mortality in transplant recipients, especially the longer their transplant goes out, so 15, 20 years. The most common um, malignancy is actually skin cancer. Um, this arises in 50% of white transplant recipients. Um, other common ones are lymphoma, lung cancer, especially if they've had a lung transplant, but even for other um, transplants. Liver, especially um, you know, if they got a liver transplant for HCC, and then kidney cancer. And then here's a whole host of infection-related cancers. So PTLD is related to EBV, anal cancer, HPV, Kaposi's, um, herpes simplex 8, et cetera. So there's a bunch of infection-related cancers that will increase because of the immunosuppression. Um, so they actually, because they, uh, they have this high rate of malignancy um, and recurrence, if you have malignancy, prior to a liver transplant, they undergo a pretty extensive workup. Um, MRI or CT to look for HCC and ultrasound to make sure the portal vein is patent. Mammogram, pap smear, EGD, colonoscopy. So lots of screening, making sure they don't have any other primary malignancy. Um, and then extensive lab tests to see their degree of renal dysfunction, viral serologies, et cetera. I've been occasionally asked to do a liver biopsy on a patient um, that was potentially going to be a liver donor in the ICU. So this is where it's unclear whether or not the patient has underlying liver disease and you don't want to transplant in that liver without, um, without first getting a biopsy, but this is not always required. And if the patient has HCC, they also get lung and brain CTs um, to make sure that they don't have metastatic HCC. So in this case, even though her um, solitary fibrous tumor was thought to be in the breast was resected and thought to be a low grade or benign one. Um, after the transplant, you know, possibly due to the immunosuppression, she ended up getting metastases to her pancreas, kidney, and neck. Um, so just a few words about solitary fibrous tumors. Um, these can be found anywhere. Um, typically they were described in the pleura, but actually they can originate, originate from any organ and extra pleural solitary fibrous tumors are actually more common than pleural ones. 
Um, most are slow growing, low grade and benign. They're actually in the sarcoma family, but they are considered mostly low grade. But 20% will have malignant features and 30% will metastasize. So these need um, long-term follow-up. And this is a board's question, which is that they can present with hypoglycemia, which is called Dogue Potter syndrome. So um, these can be hypervascular masses or T2 hyper intense masses with delayed enhancement. So I'm just gonna show you guys a few examples. These are from uh, my case file. So this was this enhancing mass in the pelvis. It wasn't attached to any organ. We thought maybe it's a sarcoma or a GIST tumor and it came back and it was a benign uh, solitary fibrous tumor. Here was one in the retroperitoneum. They look kind of similar. They're both enhancing, but have these kind of like cysticky areas. Um, this one was pretty T2 bright, not very FDG avid and had you know, progressive enhancement. So that was a solitary fibrous tumor. And then this was a huge one um, that was T2 bright with delayed enhancement. We thought maybe it's an adrenal cortical carcinoma, but it looked a little unusual because it didn't have the central necrosis. And this was also a solitary fibrous tumor. And then this last one, I think Gaurav or anyone else from UT Southwestern might remember. Um, this was a case that we had shared and it was an unusual lesion on the liver here. Um, it had this kind of globular enhancement and we were wondering if it could be a hemangioma, but we were thinking maybe it washed out. On diffusion, it looks like it was restricting diffusion. And um, this was resected and it actually was arising from the falciform ligament and was a malignant uh, solitary fibrous tumor of the falciform ligament. So any questions? The TT looked a little weird too for it to be a hemangioma. Yeah, definitely. That was the, the clue that you know, it wasn't just gonna be a hemangioma, but um, definitely here. But we were thinking maybe an atypical hemangioma or sclerosed, but yeah, we couldn't, we couldn't let it go given that and then given the, all the restricted diffusion. And, and then on this one, uh, Arthur, remember if you look at the liver capsule, it's actually, you can see it's separate oh, from the yeah. liver capsule. It looks like it's indenting the capsule as opposed to coming from the liver on those post-contrast images. Yeah. We were suspecting something coming from the false form ligament. Yeah, that was a great call. I remember one of you or one of your colleagues called that because we were just thinking it was a liver mass and you guys were like, no, I think it's actually from the falciform, which is, you can see here. Like the other lesion too, that was like subhepatic. It looks like it was also like extrahepatic. Extrahepatic, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah okay. so that could be more of a clue that it's not truly a liver lesion. Although, you know, calling a solitary fibrous tumor prospectively is a little tricky, but um, you know, it can happen. Great cases. Um, okay, everyone says great. Any other questions about that? Okay, so um, we'll see you guys Thursday. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all. Thank you.